Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tech Talk on video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. We all know the story by now. Threadripper started as a passion project by a group of engineers within AMD, but has since proven to be extremely popular with enthusiasts. So there's a question then. Will AMD improve Threadripper, not just by utilizing the Zen 2 cores for the next generation and bumping up the core count to 64, but also using eight memory channels, which would be double that of the previous generations? Well, the answer is potentially yes, based upon some information that has emerged in the last day or so. So we're going to be discussing just that and what that would potentially mean for Threadripper. Okay, so if we head over to USB.org's website and then click at the product tab at the top, you can then search for AMD and then organize things with the certification date. We want the latest certifications being at the top. Then we are greeted with two interesting entries. Well, the first of which isn't super surprising. AMD EPIC 7002 series, that would mean Rome, just so that we're clear. 02 would be the second generation of Epic, which is Rome. Anything with the 1 at the end is the first generation, which is Nepal's. The model number is Epic 7452, and the certification date is 07082019. And the speed, if you care, I don't really, is Super Speed USB 5 GPPS, because it doesn't really matter for the purposes of why we're covering this. The second entry, though, is much more interesting, and I know it was recently updated. I checked this maybe a week and a bit ago myself, and the only chipset that was listed is the X570, but let's go through the rest of the information first. Super Speed USB 10 GBPS. The certification date is 04 aka end of April this year. The model number, X570 is listed, so that has remained consistent since I checked maybe a week or so ago. However, uh, Momomo recent, uh, has uh, recently tweeted that this has actually changed, and yeah, fair enough, you can see it yourself. TRX40, WRX80, and finally, TRX80. So, this would heavily imply that TRX, anyway, would be Threadripper. After all, we've seen several benchmarks now of Threadripper emerge online. We've seen a 16-core processor, if memory serves, as well as a 32-core uh, entry as well. And, yeah, we know that AMD are working on a Zen 2-based Threadripper uh, lineup. So, the fact is, for them to list two separate entries, which says TR, would imply that there are two different chipsets. Well, there's a couple of theories here. The first is this has nothing at all to do with Threadripper. That's one way you could look at this. The second is that there is two different chipsets, but it is two different chipsets which have some other changes. An example, and I'm not saying it is, but for all we know, this could be additional PCIe lanes. Maybe there's differences on how they've configured the I.O. Maybe it's the uh, way that perhaps they're segmenting the lineup. One of the things we do know is AMD want to push more towards workstation marketing with Threadripper. They don't want to just go with content creation, which is kind of logical. I mean, I'm not saying that a 64-core processor doesn't have uses in content creation, but it's not really for the prosumer market when you get to 64 cores, assuming that's how many cores do go uh, into the third generation. I've heard that's what's going to happen from a really reputable source. It was actually the same source that told me the July 7th release date for Ryzen 3000, and that, panned, uh, that turned out to be very accurate, and he believes, according to the information he had at the time, that AMD were targeting 64 cores, for Threadripper, so it's possible then they're going to segment it in different ways, but the other way is that they could be going with an 8 and a 4 channel memory configuration. So how would that work? Well, honestly, that's where things get a bit of a head scratcher. Could it be that with quad channel memory, and this is a pure guess, could it be that quad channel memory would only go to 32 cores, for example, but if you wanted to go 
and put a higher core count in, let's say 64, then you would need to go with the 8 memory channel uh, chipset. Who knows? It would be fascinating if that's what they did, but the thing is, I would also imagine we would see quite a premium. Let's just go back for a moment and check over the second generation of Threadripper. So the ch second generation of Threadripper uh, went with the highest end SKU being the 2990WX. It launched in August of last year and cost a princely sum of 1800 US dollars. And obviously it also had a quad channel memory configuration to boot. As for the rest of the specifications, they don't particularly matter too much, but they does have a base frequency of 3 gigahertz and with precision boost 2 does go up to 4.6. If memory serves um, the the uh, 32 core CPU that we saw, which is almost certainly Zen 2 based, that has a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz. So that's 600 megahertz higher in the base frequency alone. But what does that mean for us? Well, the first generation of Threadripper, the highest end SKU was the 1950X. It launched almost a year to the day prior to the second generation and it cost 1000 US dollars well 999 US dollars to be precise and of course that was based on the Zen uh, original core processor then the second generation of Threadripper that was based upon the Zen Plus architecture which obviously brought uh, subtle improvements to IPC thanks to slightly higher clock speeds but mostly cache improvements and blah 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 the 2990WX uh, was retailing at 1800 US dollars so almost double uh, sorry double the core count but for almost double the price and the 2950X uh, which was a 16 core processor that cost 899 US dollars. So I don't think AMD are going to be bringing down the price significantly for the next generation. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they do launch a 64 core CPU. And this is a guess, I don't have AMD's pricing manifesto, but <laughs> I don't think they're going to be like, well, we're going to launch this thing really really cheap of course the one spanner in the works is that they do have the uh, 3950x but you have to remember that while it is a 16 core processor it also has considerably lower io uh, presumably anyway than what we're going to see in the third generation Threadripper. so my personal opinion is that i would not be surprised at all to see amd do some level of uh, splitting the market here and if we do see that, if AMD do decide to go down kind of like maybe one Threadripper series, which would be more for prosumer work, for example, a YouTube creator or someone who wants to do a little bit of work here and there, uh, which would be kind of taxing, but doesn't necessarily need 64 cores or maybe doesn't need eight memory channels. Whereas the other, the really high end expensive one would be the Threadripper processors which have up to eight memory channels available for them and yeah it's going to be just really interesting to see what happens there is certainly no guarantee that this is what amd will do with the third generation of Threadripper, but there are a couple of reasons to believe that it may make sense after all there were even some questions before amd even released ryzen you may recall that one of my earlier videos when I uh, revealed that we would be seeing up to 16 cores along with the Ryzen 3000 release date, my source did say that one of the questions they had internally in the marketing department of AMD is what the heck do they do in terms of Threadripper and the marketing of a 16 core processor? Well, maybe this is the answer. Recently, I say recently, maybe two, three months ago, they actually hired someone to head up the workstation product division of the company. So perhaps what we're seeing here is AMD deciding to shore things up. So think of it this way. The AM4 platform 
has from 6 cores up to 16 cores. Well, it will do when the 3950X finally launches. So that means that, in theory anyway, it basically will cover anyone for almost any usage scenario for the average user. So, for example, if you're a gamer, the 3600 is a great solution. If you're a gamer, but maybe you do a little bit of video encoding or whatever, the 3700 is also a great solution. Or even if you're just a gamer who perhaps does streaming or maybe you want to have a little bit of additional headroom, the 3700 is an amazing option. The 3900 and the 3950 are great if you do a little bit of virtual uh, virtual machine work. If, for example, you are someone who does a lot of video encoding, then the 3950 is a great processor. It does have some limitations compared to Threadripper. It doesn't have the I.O., but still, for the average user, AM4 is probably enough. So with this then, server market is obviously taken care of with uh, Roam. And so AMD can then, I guess, offer two different options. For folks who need a lot of I.O. but don't necessarily need a massive amount of uh, cores, they could release a up to 32 core option uh, or possibly just with four memory channels. But for people who do a lot of heavy, uh, heavy simulation work, a lot of physics, maybe a massive amount of virtual machine work, that type of thing, then they can release an up to 64 core option, but with eight memory channels, which would also kind of make sense. And we can also presume that we will see 3200 megahertz uh, for the memory support as well, and blah, 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 blah. It'll be really fascinating to see what they do here. And now, the final story. I was going to cover a couple of other things, but quite frankly, this video is already getting kind of lengthy. But I wanted to discuss this because of the sheer... I can't say... I can't say it any other way. Just absurdity of it. And that would be the world's largest chip that has been created. And it is actually for artificial intelligence. I don't need to tell you that AI is lucrative. It is becoming basically the next frontier. And so there is a California startup... I'm, uh, their name is Cerebrus, and they have created a chip that is quite literally larger than the standard iPad. It's 80 times bigger than its closest competitor, which is absolutely huge in size. And this chip has been created on a single wafer. So Cerebrus was created from a single wafer which measured 300 mm in size. So wafers are typically sliced up into multiple chips, usually dozens of them. So Nvidia, AMD, Intel, whomever, they will have multiple, lots of different dies from the same silicon wafer. Well, Cerebrus doesn't do that. Instead, what they did is have connections across the wafer, which would essentially allow this whole wafer to act as one massive processor, one gigantic uh, processor cluster. And the stats of this chip are just absolutely monumental, just monstrous. 400,000 cores. The square area is 46,225 mm squared. So that's actually 56 times larger than the biggest GPU that has ever been constructed. It has 18 gigabytes of on-chip SRAM, which is, well, a lot. And what about the interconnects? Because, as I just mentioned, this is created out of a huge piece of silicon, and then each of the dies are connected. Well, it has 100 PBS, that's petabytes per second, which is 33,000 times more bandwidth than other chips of its type which is, once again, absolutely crazy. The chip has been in development for about four years now and has been well-received in the industry. They've already secured um, companies who are interested in purchasing the chip, and it's not like they don't have competition. 
there are over 50 companies that are developing specialized AI chips and we've seen Tesla push towards this. Obviously Nvidia, Intel uh, not exactly recently but did acquire uh, Nirvana. So with all of this competition it's going to be fascinating to see what happens in the next several years with artificial intelligence. With any luck, you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then drop a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel because both things help us out an absolute metric ton. And you can also share the video as well because that would be amazing. You can also find a link to my RTX 2070 Super review linked in the description as well if you want to take a look. Uh, I will be also uploading a video to the channel in the next couple of days. I'm currently in the editing process, but I finished the article first, so if you want to go ahead and check that out, that would also be greatly appreciated. But for now, I'm going to let you go, so take care of yourselves and have an amazing day. Bye for now.